I got a cricket in my garage. Hey, welcome to Merrick's Garage. Got a little project I've been working on that I want to show you guys. It's a portable power grid, 12 volt battery, inverter, some switches, and solar panels. And I've got power for all my ancillary stuff while we're camping without using the power off my truck. I wanted to build this because one of my objectives is to be able to take my family into these boondocking campsites where we're not really anywhere near civilization. That requires a truck that's dependable and reliable. And the big unknown factor for me was always going to be electrical. So I did dual batteries in the truck with, you know, a, 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 a what do you call it? An isolator combiner. But once I started carrying the fridge, I knew my time was limited with that. Solar has really come a ton, a long way in the past few years. So solar gave me the option to hook up this 12 volt battery and keep it charged. This is what I got, I'm fired up on it. I think you guys will dig it. Let's check it out. When setting up this system, I had one, two, three, four, five objectives that I wanted to accomplish. First, I wanted to move from a cold cranking apps starter battery system to a deep discharge battery system. Not all batteries are created equal. You have a starting battery that's gonna have high cold cranking amps to turn that starter over and get your truck running. Then you've got a deep discharge, sometimes called a marine battery. That will not have the high cold cranking amps, but will have the resilience to be able to be discharged and recharged a lot deeper than a starting battery. Very important because it's use the right tools for the right job. Second part, separate from the truck. I didn't wanna have my refrigerator or, you know, whatever's charging, kill my main battery. Yes, I have the isolator combiner, but who knows? Separating them just makes more sense. Portable. I wanted something that we could just take with us. Stick it in the trailer, put it at the campsite when we get there, not be constrained to outlets on any vehicle. Solar powered. By putting this system together, I now have a renewable, reliable, here in California where the sun's pretty much always out, way of charging the batteries and keeping all my electronics running. Easy to use. I want my family to be able to use this. I should have added safe. Let's add, let's add safe. I built a lot of fail safes into this with fuses, breakers, and switches. I wanted my family to be able to just go on, flip a switch, plug something in, and have power. I built all the backups and precautions into it so that they can't really hurt themselves. For those of you who are electrical gurus, don't go blowing up my comment section. I'm probably going to say some wrong stuff. All I'm going to focus on today is volts, amps, and watts. We're not going to get into ohms and hertz and all that kind of stuff. So first and foremost, volts. What are volts? All volts are, are the pressure of the system. Think of it as, as the force pushing the electrical flow. Um, the analogy of a water pipe having a ton of pressure in it is a good one. I'm not gonna stray away from that because it works. So, force, pressure, is volts. Amps, all amps are, are how much is flowing through the conduit, the conductor. The flow rate is the amperage. Finally, watts, watts. Watts are just a measure of work. Voltage times amperage. 12 volts times 12 amps equals 144 watts. That's it, really simple. It's essentially the measurement of electrical work being done by the combination of the flow rate and the force. Got it? Good, me too, let's go. Hey, so now we've got all the basic fundamentals of amps, volts, and watts. Let's talk about the two basic electrical systems, DC and AC. DC is in your car. AC is in your house. Alternating current, direct current. All you need to know, and all I know, direct current goes in one way. Alternating current is constantly switching. Don't ask me why, that's just what they do. And finally, inverters. Two kinds of inverters. 
One is just going to give you a standard alternating current. Very blocky, kind of hard on electronics. The other one gives you a sinusoidal wave. Better for electronics. This is called a pure sine wave inverter, which is what I went with. I was recommended to get a sine wave inverter as the more delicate electronics like it better. Take it for what it's worth, that's what I went with, and I've been happy so far. Now that we've established the parts of the system, let's look at how they all work together. I drew a nice schematic, so hopefully you can follow along at home. First and foremost, you've got your photovoltaic charge cells, your solar panel. Those deliver the sun juice to the solar controller. Solar controller, all it does is control the flow of electricity to your 12 volt AGM battery. Think of this as a gas tank. You can overflow your gas tank. If you overflow a battery, bad things happen. Solar controller regulates the flow. Make sure you don't overflow your battery. Always put a fuse between your positive runs. It's just a good practice. So I drew one up there. The negative is then just gonna run straight to your power meter. This is a cool little device that will give you a readout on amperage, volts, peak volts, amp hours, watts, all kinds of cool stuff can be read off the display on this guy. On the positive, on the positive side, you're gonna run through a breaker off of the battery. This is what I was talking about when I said I wanted fail safe. This breaker is going to trip if there's, a, if there's a short in the system or if it's overdrawn or if there's a load that, that's beyond the capabilities of the system. This will, will snap. Then I've got my switch. This will disconnect the hot side of the battery from the inverter. Those both run into the power meter from that to the inverter and happy a little electricity comes out. Doing a test run with the ARB fridge hooked up. You can see that the fridge is currently down to 23 degrees and in standby mode. It was actually at 74 degrees when I connected it a few hours ago. And it's been running off the battery. I pulled everything out so we can take a look at it. Very simple platform I built over out of some leftover MDF. There is my 100 watt, sorry, my 100 amp hour battery. I've got two extraneous leads right now for the solar controller. These are not hooked up because I don't have the solar panels hooked up right yet. And then I've got one other lead right here. This is for my CTEC. It is a smart charger. It's actually got a bunch of different modes that will recognize what type of battery it has, what sort of load the battery is capable of, how to uh, reduce sulfation in batteries, and basically just do a recondition on the battery. They're great for AGM batteries, which is what this 100 amp hour battery is. It's another 100 amp hour AGM battery. And then up top, we've got the solar controller. The 100 amp breaker, which is way overkill right now, but it's what I had floating around, so I put it in. The battery switch and the amp meter. On here, you can see that we've got four different values. We've got in the upper right hand corner, we have the voltage of the battery system. Right below it, we've got the watts that are running through the inverter. Upper left gives us the amp draw, and right below that, we get a cycling meter that is going to give us our voltage, our watts voltage and watts in peak, our amp hours, and our watt hours. So that's going to cycle for us, gives us an overview of what the battery health is, what the draw to the system is. I gave a little cheat sheet over here so I can always keep track of exactly what state of charge my battery's at. So right now I'm running about 12.25 volts, so I'm still at about 50%. So pretty happy with how this is performing right now. The inverter, everything else, uh, nothing's running warm. Nothing's overtaxed, and yeah, we're looking good. So, pretty psyched. I just wanted to pull everything out so you guys could see it all separate before I put it back in its container. Hey, so I'm really excited to show you the solar system working, but unfortunately, it's still charging. <laughs> I've been messing around with it for the last uh, day or two, and I left the ARB fridge hooked up to it all night. And it didn't drain the battery. In fact, it still had about 12.3 amps. But with the C, sorry, it still had 12.3 volts. But with the CTEC system, 
I did want to recharge it and just condition that battery because uh, I hadn't charged it since I got it. So it's currently charging. Look at that, nice little happy lights. And as soon as it is done charging, I'm gonna give you guys the, the demonstration. So I let the battery charge overnight from the SeaTac. It's all done and charged. I wanna give you guys a quick demonstration of how you plug in a fridge. I guess it's not gonna be that exciting, but. I wanted something portable. It's, it's not light, it probably weighs about 80 pounds, but I can take it with me and it's fully sealed. I don't have any fans in it as of yet. We're gonna go ahead and see how the temperature does with the loads that I put on it. And if it's excessive, I'll put some fans on it. So, first and foremost, turn your battery on. Watt meter is gonna give us the readout, give us our voltage of the battery. I am currently at 13.1 volts on the battery, so I'm looking pretty good there. Pull this guy out a little bit. He can give me some good airflow underneath. I turn this guy on. 13 volts. Plug in the ARB. Turn it on. I forgot that I tripped the <laughs> GFI in the in the inverter, so it wasn't working. I couldn't figure out why. <laughs> so, with that said, turn on the inverter. Make sure the GFI is not tripped in the inverter. Pluggy, pluggy, and boom! Very happy. And there you have it, stage one of my solar controller next video that i do on this will have the solar panels hooked up i wanted to separate it because basically this video will get too long otherwise and i don't like long videos so thank you for watching if you haven't checked out my video on my truck electrical go ahead and check that one out that details the electrical in my truck from the dual batteries to the isolator to the harness to the fuse panel also subscribe it would be really helpful and uh, let your friends know about the channel. I enjoy making these. I hope they're helpful and thanks for watching.